This is Mr. O'Keefe's patch. <laughs> and our patch once again. Expedition 4 is shown up in the upper side and on the, the bottom right is uh, Valeri, Peggy, and Sergey of Expedition 5. Here we are in the suit room uh, on our second attempt at launch and our successful one. And uh, me, Paco, Franklin, and Pepe all set to go. And our Expedition 5 crew members uh, also very, very excited to get going. Here's the launch, as you can tell, and instead of trying to tell you, you know, what it looks like and sounds like, which I'm sure you've heard many times before, I'd like, I'd like you to realize as you see us go up and also you see the insert on the right, which is showing from a camera out our overhead window and shows the roll program, I want you to know that uh, I was able to stay equal and ahead of the vehicle on what was happening and, and to keep up and know what the next event was due to the, uh, the training that uh, I had for my first flight as a pilot. It was uh, outstanding, and it allowed me to, uh, to know what was happening at all times. And as we were coming up to the solid rocket motor separation, I could feel the tail off of the thrust, and then those separated. And just to let you know, once we continued on up, as we came up to the roll to heads up, which was probably about another four minutes after the separation, uh, Taco and I had a bet which way the vehicle would roll towards him or towards me, and I lost. So it's time for everybody on the ground to celebrate, but it's time for us to start working. And here I am rushing to try to get the uh, uh, ET tank uh, photo DTO. And uh, quickly, uh, we are on orbit. And of course, the first thing to do is open the cargo bays, which allow the orbiter to cool properly uh, and sustain the orbit. Well, fast forward now to the, uh, the meat of the mission. We're, we're in uh, the uh, rendezvous phase, and I've just finished the uh, the TI burn, I move back to the aft station and Paco takes over my seat and does the uh, mid-course correction burns uh, for the last part of the rev. That was a shot I took from the docking compartment. That was actually part of TI. And seeing uh, Endeavor arrive was just a great feeling, knowing that it's your ride, ride home. This is us on the V-bar as we're approaching uh, the final part of the approach. And if you look through the overhead windows, you can see the station as we slowly uh, climb up or fall down the V-bar toward it. And uh, we were in, in all the windows uh, available trying to get pictures and uh, also getting some pictures uh, from the, uh, uh, the SSRMS as well. We were very excited as, uh, as uh, STS-111 was uh, uh, coming forward to dock. Yeah, my task there was to get the uh, relative velocity and I was using my eyes, my uh, right eyes. That's why I'm closing one eye because I was trying to look at the picture and that's how we measure the uh, velocity. You don't want to be too fast, but you don't want to be too slow. After, we, uh, after the two rings engage and 500,000 pounds of uh, space vehicle is joined, uh, we ring the rings together and create a seal and after we check it for uh, no leaks, we're able to go in and, and greet the other crew. It was a very emotional moment, as you can tell. And uh, of course, on the other end, uh, this is uh, what uh, Carl and, and Dan were feeling. Yeah, it's always great to see new faces on board, and, uh, and especially knowing that it's your ride home. But we knew that you can see the stuff down by the feet there. There was some of the already the temp stowed. Um, equipment that we had and we we're also waiting for Franklin to come he was the last one to come on board and and uh, finally get him this was part of the handover uh, ceremony if if y'all know the first one got cut short a little bit but uh, this one we uh, we did complete and uh, uh, handed over the helm to expedition five on the fourth flight day we pulled the uh, MPLM out of the cargo bay uh, okay then we smiled for the camera that was going by and commenced uh, transfer operations. And uh, this one actually was uh, also EVA uh, preparations, uh, part of the transfer, we had to get the suits, but uh, the work uh, on board continued, and uh, that was one of the important things, is that we were able to multiplex uh, many tasks together in order to accomplish uh, what we needed to do. 
But it's time to go EVA, and that's a long day. That starts with the uh, pre-brief protocol, and here you see me uh, with the oxygen mask. This is Peggy and I uh, working uh, in EVA prep, and you would have seen the two astronauts, or you know, Philippe and uh, Franklin, in the actual crew lock. And here is uh, here they are exiting for one of their EVAs. This was the first uh, order of business, uh, basically on the end of the arm, to go and retrieve this uh, grapple fixture. This is a device that allows uh, the arm to uh, lift uh, things, and, and it will be relocated uh, by us. Uh, you, see, you see me here uh, on the arm uh, being driven to the location uh, over on the station where Pepe is already waiting for me to get it uh, installed uh, and uh, for later, later use. So on that first uh, EVA, uh, Franklin was on the arm, and I was doing all the uh, workout, trying to go from one place to another one. And here is the view I had, going along the uh, seal of the uh, uh, of the bay. So, but um, no time to look at the earth because it was about time to uh, install the uh, the shields, and that's what you see uh, here on that picture. Of course, you do, uh, and you work uh, day, and you work uh, during the uh, the night. And things are slightly different. During uh, the night pass, you get a little bit disoriented, and you get some um, a feeling of being tired. Where during the day pass, you feel really you feel really great. Except at the end of the EVA, that's about uh, six hours into the first EVA. At this point, uh, we are just about finished with the uh, with EVA one, but there's still a few things to do. Uh, and that is, we have to get the MBS, which is still in the cargo bay, and we need to get it uh, ready for uh, later, uh, as we walk uh, back into the station, uh, the robotics uh, people, the arm uh, that uh, will take it uh, off of the cargo bay and take it and put it on, on the station. In order to do that, we have to remove a, uh, several blankets that are covering sensitive avionics that are, uh, have to be kept at a, a, at a proper temperature. And uh, all of that had to be done uh, in a timely manner. Uh, we are fairly tired at this point. Uh, but uh, we got it done. And here we have the, uh, uh, the unberthing of the uh, MBS. Uh, the MBS, of course, was, uh, was then uh, mated with the uh, mobile transporter, the MT, on the uh, S0 truss. And uh, this will provide uh, a platform so that the, uh, uh, the uh, station robotic arm can move along the truss and we can continue uh, the uh, superb construction and, uh, and complete the uh, power grid. And uh, once, once the MBS is on the station, then the job is, is to connect uh, uh, and deploy a few things. So we, had to, we were able to also uh, <laughs> give signals to each other. Uh, we thought that nobody was seeing that, but actually, you know, <laughs> it's too bad. Anyway, uh, we had to uh, do a few pieces of work, right? For example, this big uh, arm had to be move out. Uh, it's about uh, uh, 400 or so pounds that you have to uh, rotate and then you have to uh, tie it down uh, with bolts. And uh, then uh, we finish that and move on to the EVA3. So that was my time to relax and be on the arm and frankly had the, uh, the good workout. But actually I had some good workout too because uh, we had a lot of bolts uh, to, uh, uh, to handle and that was a critical moment because uh, here we uh, take the uh, and defector out of the arm, and we know that the clock is uh, is ticking now. Uh, here I am taking the uh, new joint uh, in in the bay, and you can tell by the uh, the color of the uh, new, the new joint, the old joint being uh, slightly below. And it's about time to install that uh, that joint. And uh, we started uh, that EV a little bit uh, late for uh, different reasons. So we basically had to catch up and uh, work uh, faster than we had done in the pool. And uh, we ended up uh, spending more than seven hours and a half, seven and a half hours outside. But uh, all the, these uh, Canadian hardware uh, was very well designed uh, to be um, uh, changed out in space. So uh, we did not really struggle too much with the hardware. Broken in the first place, but. <laughs> So 
So uh, you can see that uh, the work involved, uh, you know, removing something, replacing with a new one, and then stowing uh, the failed uh, joint for uh, bringing it back. Uh, you can see the new joint, it has a different color. And uh, that was the end of our job. And uh, of course, uh, by then we were pretty, pretty tired. And uh, we were asked to hurry up and come back in. And the station guys had the dinner ready for us. It was a great pleasure for me to be able to operate, um, uh, or actually help uh, Valeri operate the arm, and uh, that was uh, the arm working in seven degrees of freedom, something we hadn't seen in several months. Purple gloves. <laughs> this is just some of the uh, in-cabin activities you use to uh, keep yourself going each day. This is the bravest man I've ever seen in space. I'd never seen anybody shave quite so fast. <laughs> One of the many uh, laptop computers, and this is, uh, we had Outlook email available. And I don't have a nickname of Taco for nothing. I'm making a breakfast uh, Mexican burrito here. And I'm giving it to uh, Paco to have for breakfast. And have. <laughs> Well, we tried to uh, do a little, a little science, uh, fluid physics, which I was uh, hoping to show my, uh, my crewmates, except, uh, and it was all going well until um, the pilots got involved. <laughs> this is a little bit of a tour. We're uh, looking from the lab into the node, and uh, things are starting to get, uh, as we moved uh, things out into the MPLM, it was uh, good to see the layers uh, disappear, and, and actually it was, was kind of fun when Taco asked for layers four and five. Um, and uh, looking back into the lab here, and this was probably a time where we still had, actually that was a lot of the stowage that had come on board, and uh, we were temp stowing it. Uh, Peggy had a good idea to, to temp stow things that uh, she knew they were going to use right away. That area down at the bottom there is uh, where the lab window was, and that used to be totally full with uh, CTBs. And uh, those, were, um, those bags right there were actually ones that uh, came on board and were temp stowed as well. And uh, now, and we still seem like we have a, a good bit of space, and, and now we'll enter into the shuttle world again. And it was, uh, took a bit getting used to living in such a, a large area and then coming into this. <laughs> yes. I used to think the shuttle was big also. But with nine refrigerators in the mid-deck, it isn't. So uh, the third EVA being done, it was time to relax, but uh, not completely because we still had to take our uh, suitcase back into the, uh, into the bay. And that was great flying. You really want to make sure that everything is on the right side of the MPLM hatch before the, you close the hatch. I had the, the privilege to close uh, that last um, ODS hatch and leave... Uh, uh, all our, our friends, and uh, it was quite an, an emotional uh, moment. We're starting to separate now at about uh, 0.15 feet per second, and uh, this was a great pleasure for me to have the chance uh, that Taco gave me to fly the vehicle away from the uh, space station, and I knew as I flew that I was providing a, a wonderful opportunity for Carl and Dan and everyone else to uh, look and see uh, the space station uh, in, a, in a beautiful way. And this is Taco making sure I'm flying the right direction. <laughs> and Taco also gave me the best sun angle. So I had to wear some, something to protect the eyes a little bit. And this is just the view as uh, we continue to move away. Once again, just seeing uh, uh, the beautiful ship was uh, absolutely incredible. And uh, uh, once again, thank you, uh, uh, Tommy Holloway, for uh, providing us and uh, giving us such a great uh, ship up there. I would have never believed this could have happened uh, even, even uh, six years ago. It was uh, truly hard to believe, but it's a great ship. And uh, Franklin and I, we would check that the, uh, everything would stay in place. The, ship, the uh, shields would not be floating away. and. Uh, the MBS was uh, securely uh, uh, attached on the on the MT. That was the, uh, the our first attempt uh, to get back on Earth, and uh, it takes a lot of time for everybody to get ready and 
Then we had a second attempt, and uh, then we had the uh, third attempt. <laughs> this is uh, during reentry, and I was very fortunate that I had uh, that Taco gave me the chance, as well as NASA, to fly the vehicle. And, and I'd like to let you know that Endeavour came alive at around Mach 5. All of a sudden, you could hear the wind, and she started shaking. And, and I realized that, that things were happening really quick. I have a view from a ground camera uh, that's the main picture here, and in the upper left inset is a view at the pilot's uh, front window, looking through the head-up display at the uh, runway, runway 22 at Edwards Air Force Base. Had a, just a gorgeous day there, and, and the reports from the ground were that you could see uh, Endeavour from about 100 miles away with the naked eye, and the cameras were, were tracking it uh, that distance as well. We're flying downhill on a 20-degree glide slope, uh, which is a little steep. It's sort of like a dive bombing run out of which you land and we uh, because of the conditions of the day the speed brake was open pretty big and so we had a very fast deceleration rate and things were happening quickly uh, we lower the gear here Paco does at uh, about 300 feet above the ground it's causes a lot of drag so you don't want to put it down too early and it causes a whole lot of drag if you put it down too late so there's a <laughs> narrow window of uh, putting the wheels down. There's a touchdown and then uh, we deploy the drag chute and as uh, luck would have it, the drag chute blossomed, the disc reef, to its full diameter right there just before the nose gear touchdown. So even a uh, nose gear touchdown was pretty soft and even they weren't, they weren't on uh, intercom at the time, but we could hear the cheer on the flight deck from the mid deck as the wheels of Endeavour uh, hit terra firma again. The uh, comment inside the cabin was, okay, Taco, you're past midfield, you're below, below 140 knots, you can use the brakes. And I said, well, if I can lift my feet to them, I will, I will push on them a little bit. <laughs> it never ceases to amaze you uh, how heavy you feel.